reviews. So first, let's start with talking about what is a literature review. So a literature review is both a summary and an explanation of the complete and current state of knowledge on a limited topic as found in books and journal articles. But what's probably more important to us is understanding the purpose of a literature review. There are many reasons why um, a literature review is useful or important. First, a literature review gives readers easy access to background knowledge on a particular topic. So this is to say that the literature review gives the audience kind of an easy way to understand all of the background information necessary in order to follow the paper that you have presented in front of them. It also helps researchers understand a new research area. It also ensures that researchers do not duplicate work that has already been done. Again, this is super important, um, seeing as you are all aspiring um, to potentially publish uh, or engage in academic writing, a literature review is essential for understanding and knowing uh, what background knowledge on a particular topic already exists uh, so that you are familiar with everything out there and so that you do not duplicate efforts. A literature review also provides clues as to where future research is heading and or it recommends areas on which to focus. So this is super important for you all because you're trying to formulate an inquiry question to address in this upcoming paper. So actually the process of writing the literature review should help you understand where exactly the research is now heading. As many times researchers or academics who are writing these articles or books or what have you, they often end up uh, leaving with more questions than they answered. And these questions can provide us with incentive for tackling new inquiries or writing new topics or uh, new ideas on a certain topic, I should say. Literature reviews also highlight key findings. So again, they uh, bring up the key findings of a particular topic. They're giving you information about the most important aspects of a particular topic. In addition, purpose, um, sorry, the literature re review serves the purpose of identifying inconsistencies, gaps, and contradictions in the literature. So inconsistencies, gaps, and contradictions in the literature, believe it or not, are probably useful to you. Where there are gaps, those are places that you could seek to fill with your own writing. So if you're struggling to think of a question um, and you're not really sure what exactly you're, you want to inquire about, looking at the gaps in the literature is a great place to start. Inconsistencies and contradictions are equally important because they also help you formulate your uh, opinions or ideas when it comes to your inquiry report. What are different people saying within the same topic? And do you find legitimacy in both? Or what is your position on kind of these inconsistencies and contradictions. Furthermore, a literature review provides a constructive analysis of the methodologies and approaches of other researchers. Again, this one is super important. Um, when you're reading on a particular topic, you really want to pay attention to the methods that other researchers who are also engaging with this particular topic are using, as you may either be able to um, use those methodologies yourself or understand the flaws in those methodologies, which will help you create a better methodology for your own approach. So now let's talk about how you actually write a literature review. So we've broken it up into steps to make it a little bit easier to follow or easier to understand. Again, these aren't really set in stone. They're just supposed to guide you in the process of writing a literature review. So step one is finding a specific area of research. And two sub-questions that should help you address this idea is what interests you. First and foremost, the whole purpose of this is for you to inquire. Why does one inquire? Because one is curious, because one wants to know more, etc. So therefore, 
this uh, specific area of research should be one that interests you. As we mentioned in the previous slide, there are often gaps in literature or need for further um, contributions as you know, prior research may have left off with many questions unanswered that are prime for uh, upcoming researchers to address. So the second point is what areas need to be developed or explored within this area of research or within this particular topic. Step two, review the literature. So how do we do this? Use keywords to search databases. Again, we're trying to stray away from just Googling, right? We want to use academic databases that give us access to journals. We also want to refer to reference lists and articles that you have already read about the topic. So if you perhaps had um, certain literature on this particular topic at QRTA, perhaps it would be useful to go back to those articles that you read at QRTA and look at the reference lists in them and try to figure out who's doing work on what and which areas interest you more and then maybe going to those uh, references found in the articles that you may have had at QRTA uh, and using that as a starting point for trying to gather the literature relevant for your literature review. Lastly, consider including studies that contradict your point of view. Why is this important? So a strong paper usually not only presents a strong argument, but within that strong argument deters others from uh, believing the contrary or being persuaded by the contrary. That's to say that if you address the contradictory viewpoint, you can then talk about or expand on why your perspective is better or stronger or most relevant or applicable, right? So the strongest writers are able to address differing points of views and still prove or persuade as to why their point of view is actually the correct one or the best one. Step three, this is really important. Um, it can be quite difficult, but Step three is really focus on your topic, um, or sorry, not focus on, but focus your actual topic. So what does that mean? That means try to find a narrow topic within the body of research or literature that you are looking into. And honestly, the, one of the ways that is most intuitive to do this is by asking yourself, what interests me? What are things that I've been exposed to at QRTA that really interested me um, and that maybe I had thought about extensively after my class period or after I read the literature on it at QRTA? What are things that I really took time to reflect on and want to know more about? The other point that you can focus on is what interests others, right? So this is more catered towards your audience. How can you focus your topic so that it becomes a topic or so that it is a topic that is going to be relevant to others. Why would others want to read it, right? Um, and this will come from understanding what the gaps in the literature are or what questions still remain. That will help inform you what might interest others, whether it's people in the field or students, etc. So step four is to analyze and evaluate selected papers. So first of all, what assumptions do some or most researchers seem to be making? So what do people in the field, people who are conducting research in this area, what are things that they just already assume when they're going into their specific topics? That's something you want to keep in mind. Again, referring back to methodologies, it's important to note what methodologies other people who are writing about similar topics as the one that you seek to write about are using. Those approaches are going to help you identify what works and what doesn't work for your own research. Evaluate and synthesize the research findings and the conclusions drawn, right? So we're, as we've discussed previously, evaluating is about judging essentially the usefulness of a particular piece of writing. 
Synthesizing is really about understanding the most important pieces or parts of a particular piece of writing. No experts in the field. So this isn't always super important, but I think, um, you know, moving forward, if your plan is to be engaged in academic literature and academic research and academic writing, you do want to be familiar with the names or laboratories that are frequently recognized referenced in writings that are relevant to the topic that you are researching. Why? Because you really want to know who are the major players in the field, who really know their stuff, and who are the people that are paving the way or leading in this field, and what are they saying. Note conflicting theories, results, and methodologies, right? It's equally important to compare the literature um, and not just take it for granted, right? You're comparing between multiple pieces of writing um, and you're trying to figure out whether largely there's one sort of team or field uh, who believes in a certain thing or whether there are two differing camps or fields of people that maybe oppose each other, but you know they're addressing the same topic, they just don't agree. Um, again, when it comes to results, it's very important um, this is a lot of times where people will differ, though they may have similar approaches or similar methodologies, their results may be uh, vastly different, uh, and it's worth understanding why or how that's possible. Lastly, watch for popularity of theories and how this has or has not changed over time. So this is basically asking you to think about, are there theories in this particular area of research that have remained the same pretty much over time and no one questions them? Is it fair not to question them? Is there uh, more updated research that uh, reaffirms that old theories are still applicable? These are just questions for you to keep in mind when you're thinking about uh, the literature review and relevance and applicability. Step five, organize the selected papers using pattern. So here, when I say the selected papers, I mean the pieces of writing that you have selected as the sources that you want to include or that you feel need to be included in your literature review. So part of the actual literature review process is organizing these uh, sources in a way that is most, um, is most important or relevant to your audience, right, and to your topic. Right, so you, you could, um, and people do in some occasion, on some occasions, organize literature reviews chronologically, that means by time. So they sometimes will, certain, let's say, um, academics or writers will organize their literature review by periods of time. So maybe the 1900s, you know, the 2000s, etc. But that is not usually... Um, the strongest way of going about it unless you're maybe very focused on a historical context. Um, in your case, uh, one of the suggestions that we have is to pick two or three important trends in the research. So after you have evaluated and analyzed the research or the sources that you'll be using for your literature review, note what are the important trends in all of these pieces. Um, maybe there are two or three that are most prominent, those are the ones that you may want to use as your subheadings or subtopics in the literature review. And that leads me to the third point, which is developing subtopics or subheadings, right? Your goal here is to make this piece of writing most the most accessible possible that you can to your audience. And part of that means developing subtopics and subheadings so that it's easy for people to follow your thought process and how you want them to see the paper that you're presenting them. Um, to go back to point two, focus on the most influential theories. This kind of goes hand in hand with the first topic. Um, sometimes the most important trends in the research will also be the most influential theories, but sometimes they won't be. So, um, the influential theories are going to come from those people that we spoke about in the last slide, you know, knowing who are the big names in the fields, in this field of research, 
um, or the big universities or laboratories that are engaging in research about this topic. Step six, focus on analysis, not description. This is very, very, very important. If we wanted to just simply describe literature, honestly, we could just paraphrase it and that would be kind of the end of the day, you know, but um, that's not what we're doing here. When we're talking about analysis, we're really talking about dissecting and understanding all of the moving parts of a particular piece of writing. So some points that may be able to help you with this is to be sure that your topic sentences are strong. If you have topic sentences that are strong, you usually have parsed out already what it is that is um, most significant um, to your actual inquiry question. You should also be thinking critically, evaluating, and comparing. So again, this is to say that an analysis is not simply summarizing or noting who said what. An analysis is more than just understanding the general idea or the main idea. It's really understanding all of the reasons um, or all of the evidence and all of the moving parts that uh, make the thesis of a paper strong or not. Some questions that you should consider when writing a literature review. How does the reading help you get a better understanding of the issue, right? Of the issue refers to your inquiry question. So how is the literature review that you're writing going to contribute to your inquiry question or to your understanding of this? That's extremely important, right? You're not just writing a literature review just to write it. It has a purpose as we have already discussed. So make sure that you are sticking to that purpose. Number two, how relevant is the reading to your particular context? Okay, this is a place where people really struggle. Um, in very popular research areas or very big or broad research areas, it can be very easy to become overwhelmed by so many articles or sources. Um, first of all, because you might find them all equally interesting. Um, but two, because there are just so many publishings about some of the same or similar topics, let's say, within the same broader research area. So it's really important for you to narrow down exactly which sources are directly relevant to the context that you are discussing, right? Um, it's not helpful to stray from that. You know, it just creates more work for you in the sense that you are sitting there analyzing, evaluating, and synthesizing articles or pieces of literature that are not in your best interest to use. Three, what do you regard as the strengths or limitations of what you have read? So this is super important, right? Again, this will help you in your inquiry. What are the limitations of the work that other people have done and what are the strengths, right? And in some ways you want to I guess mimic the strengths or you know take the strengths as an example i'm not saying copy and paste but use them as examples for how you can approach your inquiry and then also use the limitations as examples right what did people not do or what did people not do correctly that you should try to improve or make better in your own inquiry and for this specific inquiry your magic number is 800 so QRTA has designated uh, the literature review as the section of your inquiry paper that should have 800 words. So again, 800 is not really a huge number. So you don't have a ton of space to stray from your point at all. Really, you want to be as direct, as concise as possible. And what's really going to help this is narrowing your specific inquiry question, which leads us to the last point. That your literature review should help you refine your inquiry question. Perhaps you had already created the inquiry question. I mean, to some degree, you have had to when you're writing your literature review because the literature you're looking for is addressing this question. However, it might be the case that through the literature review process or the process of writing it, you realize that your question was actually still too broad and you manage to refine it or narrow it even more based on the literature you found and what most interested you or where you found there was the most need for more work or more research. And this is pretty much all. I hope it was helpful.